third and short the single back for the Wolverines and he gets the ball and oh, oh, he got decked short of the line of scrimmage and it was 97 that did the job on it Philip Ward with some help from Dan Juan McGee so he ran into two well, linebackers that's, that's, who were Roman Ruben that's that stunning unorthodox defense that we talked about earlier that he would just blitz the gap and got into the backfield this is a time where you might just go for it on fourth down, Keith. Well, it's fourth down and three now. It'd be a, uh, it'd be probably a 47-yard field goal. Just right, go here for comes it on Streets down. and yeah. Shaw and Chris Floyd. So they've sent a passing play onto the field. Reisbach says, "Wait a minute, I want to talk about this with my coach." So you got a timeout charge to Michigan. in the second quarter pretty good field position over here also for Michigan but uh, slow start played very well in the second quarter fourth down and three they made it the last time they tried it that's Tuman moving across the tight end they got Williams outside to the right leaving Floyd the single back and it is Kreisbach looking and throwing for the tight end and it is incomplete and the man who went back and got in between the ball and the receiver, Sean Williams, and distracted, I'm sure, Jeremy Tooman, and it's incomplete. Good call, Keith. Uh, watch as Dreisbach is going to look to Tooman all the way. What that does is tells Williams, the free safety, where he's going with the football. Number 32 gets over, and if it weren't for Williams, that ball could have been complete. And so the Bruins stop the Wolverines and UCLA taking over at their own 30 yard line with Jurel Price in the backfield. That's Derek Ayers coming across. No, it is uh, coming across and Michigan just ate up the pressure. My goodness, they got on him. Joaquin Fizell was there. Uh, Woodrow Hankins was there. What in the world is Woodrow Hankins doing up there? It, blitzing yeah, quarterback. Blitzing corner. Whenever they don't put a wide receiver out that side, he'll come. William Carr was there, and always number 37, Jared Irons. Yeah, Joaquin right there, number 90, was going to, he's from Georgia, and he was going to, on his recruiting uh, time, he was going to cancel his visit to Michigan, but couldn't find Coach Fred Jackson's phone number to call it cancel, so he came and made the trip. He said, Michigan's for me. Blitz coming. Passes away incomplete and McNown's flat of his back as Clint Copenhaver was uncovered and came like a runaway truck. Well, that's just poor timing. There's there's something wrong with the with the, the, the timing between Cade McNown and the receivers. It's a little behind him. They're running away from it. They don't slow up when they're open. It, the timing today for UCLA's passing game is not there. Six of 17, and that is all not McNown's fault. He also had an interception. He had thrown 97 passes up to that interception, and he threw on the last possession. Third and 14. He's got trouble all over him right here. Gets his ball away, though, and it is incomplete. It was David Bowen who almost had his seventh sack. The Michigan record for quarterback sacks in the season is 11. So the Michigan defense just shuts down UCLA. And Chris Saylor is in the punt. He had one pretty good one out of the end zone. The rest of them have been pretty ordinary. This is a better one. Chuck Winters lets it go, and it's out of bounds. It really looked like he was going to get up and go, but it uh, kind of dropped like a wounded goose and only traveled 29 yards. <laughs> Perfect for any game, Domino's. First down for Michigan. Reisbach looks, throws for Shaw, and it is complete. Number 10, Anthony Colbert, the 5'8 cornerback, was one on one out there and made his move as if he might thought he might have a chance at interception but nope the ball was zipped in nicely by Dreisbach. Well, here's what you're seeing Keith with this defense everybody's in here you're getting a lot of one on ones this time he's just going to go down and run a little curl they try and stop the Michigan run you, 
and the wide receivers inexperience and UCLA's idea and everybody that's played Michigan this year is it one on one on the outside. Oh, on the first down play, the Wolverines go back to the run, give it over to Chris Howard, who's played quite a bit today, and he has about a yard or so on the carry. Here's one. Well, Keith, when Bob went over his uh, first half stats, I, I could have sworn he was eavesdropping on my conversation with Lloyd Carr, because Lloyd said we are a terribly weak starting football team in that first half. To totally disappointed with the opportunities they missed on offense, but just as excited about the way his O-line is blocking and the way Williams is running. He says we're going to be more physical in the second half. Keith? Second down and nine. I'm sure UCLA loves to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one zipped right into Shaw. And so Shaw that's makes another catch in this possession. And that's worth about six, seven yards. It's not much, Keith. It's, I mean, they're just curl routes for the wide receivers. But these young wide receivers, I'm talking about Shaw and Streets, it's something to build on. It's, you catch some balls. You get some confidence. And that's what this Michigan team needs. They are weak, inexperienced on the outside. And they're not untalented. They just haven't played there a lot. Woodson's back. He's got it on the reverse. Going back the other way now. He's got help. Look out. Abdul McCullough is trying to fetch it in. And finally, he's run down from behind by Javelin Gidry. And you know he wanted to score. You know he wanted to get in. I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing a great athlete, one of the top players in college football. This guy is a defensive back. He starts at corner. He is only a sophomore. Made all Big Ten last year. He's running a reverse to his left. He doesn't work with the offense very much during the week. And he has the ability to get back and go the other way. First and goal for the Wolverines. Reisbach gives to Howard. Touchdown. Well, I think you can break out the bubbly, uncover the chocolates, and heat up the stones, because the party is about to start in Ann Arbor. I think we said at the beginning, Keith, that, that, that Michigan was a physical football team. And I, I think you're seeing that UCLA is wearing down. There's a missed block right there in the hole. And everybody else is pushed back. Hamilton for the point. Nine minutes to play in the third quarter. And the score is Michigan 28, UCLA 3. Chris Howard gets all of the... Uh, for scoring the touchdown, but it was this play. Charles Woodson on his double reverse on his own to get it down inside the five and made the play. What's the difference between noise and sound? Noise is what the Dodge Stratus engineers did away with using high-tech insulation, multiple door seals, vibration defeating suspension, and sound. To convert on third down, and they've taken the ball away one time. 0 for 9, not very good. Remy Hamilton kicks it off. This is Keith Brown. Oh, oh. That lick they heard in West Olive. Chris Singletary looked like. West Olive. Monday night, Deion Sanders and the Dallas Cowboys head to the city of brotherly love. But that's a misnomer. They'll take on the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC East. There won't be anything friendly for the Cowboys when they go into that football stadium on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time here on ABC. Skip Hicks is now in with Cheyenne Caldwell in the backfield of the woods. And it is Kane McNowan throwing to the sideline. And the pass, no good. Todd McBride did not have control well, when he, he was knocked out. Yeah, they say he came out of bounds. 
the official gave the, the sign that he was out of bounds. Keith, that should have been a completed pass. He had yep. plenty of room. The defensive back was off. They just Somebody's got to step up and make some plays here for UCLA. a junior from Pacoima and that is short of the first down the ball is marked out at the 27 yard line eight minutes and 35 seconds to play in the third quarter Michigan leading 28 to three it is third and two but down came into this game the third rated passer as far as pass efficiency is concerned in the Pac-10 and 13th in the nation but that just shows you how early in the season this is two and three and four games played. You can't tell much until you've played at least five if not six games. Right? Just, just guess it. Back down throws and that was dropped. I don't know how many passes have been dropped today by people in, in those positions. Todd McBride has had three or four himself. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that was clearly a catchable ball and uh, would have given him a first down by three or four you yards. You can't be falling away from the ball. You have to come to the ball. McBride was falling away from it before it even got there. So Chris Saylor is in again now. He's kicked it two, four. This is number seven. It's a push in the back by Michigan, and uh, the play is going to come back. Number three, Todd Brooks, was involved uh, over there, and uh, he's come off the field. Jason Bell was the Bruin involved, and he's gone off the field. So, yeah, there's no question that there was a, a block in the back. Keith. The penalty flag was thrown back at the 30, and if you were looking at it, you could see it very clearly when it happened. Here's Swanee. Well, Keith, I was working out over at the uh, Michigan facility, and uh, Rod Payne came over to me and was telling me how good the offensive line was and how they were going to really take it to UCLA and that we should put the spotlight on them. I said, well, what time? He said, any time. So this is dedicated to Rod Payne. We're going to call this the Rod Payne Anytime Challenge. We're going to focus on the offensive line. <laughs> and, Bob, you grade them. You <laughs> yeah. tell me if they win. Yeah. Payne is a very uh, likable, affable, outgoing guy, fun-loving, and uh, fifth-year senior from Miami. And uh, he is a preseason All-American, an outstanding player, but uh, he keeps everybody loose for sure. So here after the penalty is Michigan on the 20. First down. They lead 28 to 3. Give it to Chris Howard. And he's got three yards. Now is, is three yards a win? Four yards on first down is a win. Michael Here's Payne and his associates. 52 is Payne. He's blocking back. He gets a plus on that, that one. Unless you're holding. Well, <laughs> I don't know. He's holding on. <laughs> Usually four yards on first down is a plus. That's not four, that's three. That's about three. Second down and seven. Chris Howard has 11 carries and 71 yards today, but his big number is three touchdowns. And Dreisbach has called timeout. So Michigan will have one left at 7-12 to play in the third quarter. Here's a look at the top 25 around the country. The top four are winning. No 
Notre Dame is losing uh, at home against Ohio State. Tennessee is off. Miami beat uh, Pittsburgh earlier this afternoon. North Carolina losing to Florida State. Alabama, USC, and Kansas State are taking the weekend off. You know, it looks to me like Don Nealon's got a pretty good little team over there at Morgantown, West Virginia. I tell you, all those teams in Virginia are strong this year. Virginia Tech, Virginia, West Virginia. All right, second down and seven as Michigan comes up with Clarence Williams, the single back, and Butterfield in motion. And Reisbach play action, keeps it, lets it go deep. He's got high streaks. And he's got the ball. He is taken down by Aaron Rock. But it's a big play, first down Michigan at the UCLA 38-yard line. Well, this is the play that they hit uh, Williams out of the backfield on. This is time both wide receivers come across field. The first one uses for flare control, and the second one goes deep. He throws the ball up and over. Good execution, good completion. Drives now 236 yards, 13 of 25, passing and a touchdown and an interception. And Chris Howard's in the backfield. He has the ball. And he rumbles for five. Here's a look at that offensive line. Rod Payne in the center, number 52. Blocking on Smith, number 58. Does a nice job. The offensive line for Michigan is not overly big. There's no 300-pounders up there. It seems like every week, Keith, we see four or five 300-pounders in that offensive line. But the Michigan, I mean, the UCLA defense is quite light. Yes, they are. This is Chris Howard. He's inside the 25 to the 24. First down for Michigan. See, the uh, the UCLA uh, interior people, uh, they're around 230, 240. That's light in today's marketplace. Yeah, yes, it is. Here's that offensive line. Everybody blocking down. Good blocking on the middle linebacker. McGee, he, he must have been playing well coming in because they had two guys on him. <laughs> guys watch those films and say who's uh, making all the tackles Chris Howard big day for Howard came in with some bad ribs and uh, the whistle the umpire threw his uh, flag Parchenko might very well have been wiggling around he was Six four two ninety four. He is from Etobicoke, Ontario. Dreisbach's uh, grandfather, Keith uh, Eddie Ehlers, was a great athlete at Purdue, and then went on to play in the NBA with the Celtics and the Yankees. So his bloodlines are pretty good. He also had an uncle, Tom Ehlers, played in the NFL. Chris Howard bouncing off a tackle got away from the stack and Gidry desperate to get him so he wouldn't score his fourth touchdown of the day and you got the face mask it'll be inadvertent and it'll be five yards well, let's check out on that offensive line Payne and Parchenko and Wines Payne number 52 doing a nice job Staying with his man, too. That physical offensive line. Howard's having a great afternoon. He's over. He's 100 yards right now. Chris Howard, 100 yards. So we got a final score out of Columbus. Ohio State, 29. Notre Dame, 16. And we've got Penn State, Notre Dame in Columbus for you next week. In some areas of the country. This is Chris Howard. On first and goal, he'll have a yard or so down to about the seven. The snap taking place inside the ten. They'll probably give him two yards on the play. Scoreboard's giving him three. Shaw comes off now. Number four is out of the ball game. 
And number three, Todd Brooks has gone in. And he will be the man at the bottom of your picture. Ty Streets is the wide out to the top, taller of the wide receivers at 6-2. And if they throw the probable target, but they don't throw, they give it to Howard. And he scores. Touchdown, Michigan. Four times, old Chris has been in the end zone today. The offensive line, Marchenko blinds. That's Adamy number 68 pulling, and a nice job of running by Chris Howard. Yeah, the offensive line took that uh, challenge from Lenny Swan and, uh, and marched it right down. It's good. And 20, Rod Payne has just sent a message up that you owe him and his pal all a steak dinner. <laughs> well, uh, Keith, I, I'd be happy to pay, but it's against the NCAA rules. Oh, well, they'll they'll yeah. just have to be happy and satisfied. They'll wait till summer. we them, they met the challenge. They said they would wait till summer. <laughs> I'll tell you, he was, he's a remarkable young man. He was quoting uh, Fielding Yost to me on the, in the locker room, telling me about the heart and the desire you have to have to play football. And you could just see in his eyes, he meant every word of it. And I knew when he, took, when he gave that challenge that every play in this football game, he'd be going after someone. Yeah. Ex-President ex uh, Gerald Ford was at practice on Thursday. And uh, after he talked to the group, uh, Rod Payne got up and gave him a jersey being a captain. And he was talking to Payne, and I was talking to President Ford afterwards after they got back to practice. And he said, you know, I played center at Michigan. And he says, I weighed 195 pounds, and I was one of the biggest guys. He says, Rod Payne told me he weighs 295 pounds. And I said, not only that, he moves around like he could play half pound. Yeah, but he had, he had, he had better time than President Ford did. Times were tough back in those days. Oh. From about the 14-yard line, it's Ryan Rock. And he's got a good return for UCLA out across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Now here's a story from John Saunders. Keith, another of the unbeatens has fallen. Notre Dame at home. Stanley Jackson, 14 yards to D.J. Jones for the touchdown. 29-10 at that point. It stands up as a 29-16 victory for the Buckeyes. But you want to hear about a great day? Troy Davis, 378 yards and four touchdowns against Missouri in a win. Oh, wow. 378 yards. Oh, boy. Is that something or what? Ooh. You know that D.J. Jones, the tight end for Ohio State's a great story, too, Keith. Open heart oh, yeah. surgery a couple of years uh, ago and back playing college football. I remember D.J. coming around and said, I'll be back. Yep, yep. Gully, he is. Yes, he is. Ball is on the 42-yard line. Second down and eight now for UCLA, and they are being uh, thumped pretty good right now. 35 to three. McDowell's pass is thrown right to Charles Woodson. You know, a lot, of, a lot of teams do not throw at Woodson. This ball just flies off his hands, Keith. A lot of teams will not, will not go over at him. Here you go, one-on-one. -on -one. Michigan is leaving him over here because there's nobody else can, can cover better. Go ahead and run it. Down at the bottom of your screen, number two. This ball sails off of his hand, throws it too deep, I don't know if the receiver was supposed to run a deeper route or if McNown, that ball just slipped, but it went right at, but it went right at Woodson. All right, we're changing quarterbacks at 35 to three. Brian Greasy is on the field at quarterback. John Ames is in at fullback. And Chris Howard uh, is in at tailback and it's Ames the up man. And a penalty flag is thrown on the stack. Ains, a six foot two, 224 pound freshman. And now Lloyd Carr starting to go to the bench. He feels he has this one in control and it's a personal well, it's foul. Like call. He, he told us the other day, Keith, that, that his, his games before this against Illinois and Colorado and uh, Boston College were all close games. Wow. He didn't have an opportunity to get any of his younger players in the ballgame. 
Personal foul on the Bruins will move the ball down to the 37-yard line where it'll be first down for Michigan. The front line offensive front is still on the field for Michigan with the exception of Damon Benson who has, was injured and taken out of the game. And it's Ains carrying the ball and he thumps in there with some authority, doesn't he? He's a big kid, Keith. 17 years old, young kid. His 18th birthday is not going to be until when? 17 years 17. Old. November's is going uh, to be 18 years old. How many grades does he have in his high school? I don't know, but he must be an <laughs> awful bright kid. <laughs> There's Gwines, number 75. Uh, he was saying the other day that he's looking, looking forward to getting into broadcasting because he wants to take Dan Deardorff's job someday. Of course, Deardorff played uh, tackle here at Michigan also. On second down and six. Greasy lets it go to the corner for Streets. And it's incomplete. He was out of bounds. He made one of the catches of the year in that Colorado game, didn't he? Yes, he did. Tipped that thing Unbelievable. Up and caught it. And Tipped it, it twice. Big play. <laughs> oh, that'll wow. make the highlight reel. Aaron Rock defending on the play. This is good coverage right here. If anything, Streets may have pulled off of him. Good effort by Streets. Landed out of bounds. Now, in college Look football, at that. he That's was a great catch. You're not forced out in college ball. You catch it out of bounds, you're out of bounds. Right. No matter how you got there. But that's a great effort by Streets, no matter where he was. Third down, six. And the Bruins blow in and get him. Greasy goes down for a loss on the play. Back around the original line of scrimmage. It was Travis Kirschke and Philip Ward who came from the top of the picture. And it'll be fourth down. Kirschke's a three-year starter on that UCLA line, Keith, and one of the leaders on this ball club. Gidry back to receive the punt. Doing the punting, trying to kill it deep. First one he knocked out on the four yard line today, and he's got this one down there, too. Well, they knock it into the end zone. Oh, the Michigan players went down. If it left it alone, it was going to go out of bounds at about the five, and they knock it into the end zone. <laughs> oh, Brian, he'll have a huddle over that. <laughs> Keep your cut and picking fingers off of it. Let it quit bouncing. Well, next Saturday, Live at 3.30 Eastern, we have a great lineup of college football games, regional action. We've got Penn State, as I told you, at Ohio State and Columbus. Nebraska will go against Kansas State in the Big 12. Big ball game there. California meets USC. Georgia Tech hosts Virginia. Check your local listings on your ABC station or call your cable operator. And here's Kate McNown throwing high and wide to Eric Scott in complete. And we go high and wide to John Saunders in New York. And right now it's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day in the Florida State-North Carolina game. That Busby just throws this ball up for grabs. Dre Bly is underneath. A bunch of Blyves, he takes off, then he makes a mistake. Coughs it up here, and it's recovered by Todd Fordham. Sets up a Warwick Dunn touchdown from 11 yards out. 10-zip is still the score in the fourth quarter. Keith. Wow. Carolina's playing them well. Yes, they are. Defensive battle. I thought that would be a defensive That's in battle. Tallahassee. Yep. This is Skip Hicks. And Skip buggered up there at the line of scrimmage as he turned from uh, sort of a bit of a mix-up, it looked like, and uh, gets very little out of it. Now, well, let's see. The Pac-10, California's... Oregon State, that's a conference game. Washington State against San Jose. And Oregon, Arizona State, a game tonight with Oregon, Arizona State's in Tempe. Yeah, that's... Uh, that, then they play Boise State, and then they go to the Rose Bowl yeah. play UCLA. Yeah. That'll be a good one. Third down and seven. This time, McNown is short. I was starting Okay, it is not having a good day. It's just been a bad day all around for McNown. It's half his fault and half the receiver's fault. I think he's lost some confidence in his receivers and, and what's going on here. The lights have been turned on, support lights from the outside. The game was at 3.30. We're now past 6. It's a low overcast day 
in and out, but at least the rain stopped last night. Chuck Winters is standing deep for Michigan now, waiting for the punt from Chris Saylor. His last one was a 50 yard. And Winters backs away from it, lets it go, and it goes out of bounds. Right at the 36 yard line of Michigan. It goes down as a 42 yard punt. A minute and 14 seconds to play in the third quarter. To both offense and defense. Not just one side of the ball. That's a five-yard gain for Ains, brought down by Ryan Neufeld. And he's in constantly insisted that uh, he is uh, building on what he found uh, in relief when he uh, succeeded Terry Donahue after 20 years. Yeah, well, he was there with Terry for a couple of years. He said from Terry Donahue, he learned patience, you know, just... Bob Toledo is, likes trick plays and is an offensive guy. And I think he'll do well. I wonder when John Ames got up this morning if he had any idea that he'd be carrying the ball he as hasn't, much. He hasn't played in a game this year. This is the fourth game, and this is the first time he's gotten in, Keith. And he's carried six times for 18 yards. And most of them have been right up the gut. I mean, I, I think Carr's trying not to run up the score. They've got this game in hand, but at the same time, uh, you want to give some of your players that haven't gotten in, you know, some carries and some throws and some receptions and, uh, and the offensive line, some depth. Well, at third down and a long four, they put Clarence Williams back in. And Brian throws it out there to him, and he won't get away. No, it's eight. And they've held him to 104. But the big story is they have held the passing game down to under 50 yards. And uh, Cade McDown has had uh, not a very good afternoon, to say the least. Third punt of the day for Paul Barristeris, 46 and 29. He clears it out of there with some pressure on him. Gets it up high, and Andy Colbert calls a fair catch. Out at the UCLA, 32 yard line with 11 40. Well, McDown. Got pretty good protection. Gets hit a little bit at the very end, but he throws it behind his tight end. It's the last three possessions have ended with interceptions, three of the last four. Tom Brady, who threw an interception himself for UCLA's only touchdown, uh, last the time he was in for a series, has skipped the series now, and he's back. With John Ains lined up behind him and three wide outs at the top. One of those being the tight end who comes back inside and they run it. Lloyd Carr will not run up a score. I mean, you can look at that. The Boilermakers won a bowl game. Yes, yes. Michigan State won a bowl game. Well, it'll be quiet in Ypsilanti tonight. Mm -hmm. That's where I plan on dining. Uh huh. Northwestern a winner, and Northwestern is next for Michigan. And that'll be a good one. Yeah, well, in Evanston. Down in Evanston. Haynes is turned upside down by Glenn. He took it over, Javelin Gidry. Just two receivers out, both wide receivers and tight ends are staying back in in maximum protection. He's looking left the whole way. That's good coverage and just a good catch. Shaw goes up and takes it away. Good zip on that ball. And so it's at the 15-yard line. First down for Michigan with nine minutes to play in the ball game. Haynes. Freshman from Kentwood, Michigan. Wisconsin has tied Penn State with 3.50 to play, 2020. That could be overtime, huh? I suppose. We haven't had one of those this year. I was kind of... Uh, we were close last week. Yes, we were. Texas and... Uh, uh, Notre Dame. You know when we'll get it. But you, yeah. When you're running for an airplane. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> we want the, want the game to be early. And uh, it's snowing and yeah. icy and... Yeah. 
prospect of being <laughs> delayed. J.R. Ford checks in. Kind of surprised to see him, but there he is. And he gets the ball. And gets down close to the 10 yard line. J.R. is a 190 pound redshirt freshman from Columbus, Ohio. How in the world can Michigan go into Columbus, Ohio and recruit somebody? Well, they, I'll tell you one thing, Keith. Some of these kids just, just like the helmet. They like the uniform. You know, there's several kids that say that the first thing that attracted them to Michigan was watching football on TV and seeing the helmets. Rich Chrysler did that. Painted them so his quarterback could see their receivers. He got tired of alibi. Ford is swarmed on and taken down. I was uh, talking to Gerald Ford a couple days ago, and I asked him, I said, they have these type of helmets when you were playing. He says, heck, he says they had leather helmets. He said he pointed to a scar under his eye, and he says, he says we didn't have face masks either. See, you see this scar? I got this from tackling Jay Burwanger. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, we had to play both ways back then. Well, it's good he, for you. And they did. That's right. There are times to play in the game. 35 to 9. And this will be a 31-yard try. It's now 38 to 9, Michigan leading UCLA. Or give your cable operator a call, and if he hasn't got what you want, give him what for. 6.48 to go in the ball game. Michigan has utter control of it. From the first quarter on, all of the scoring started in the second quarter. Michigan jumped out 14 0, 14 3, and uh, they've had pretty much control of it since that time. Remy Hamilton kicks it off. Doesn't get his uh, whole lot of foot on it. It drops on the ground, believe it or not. And works out pretty well. Michigan recovers the UCLA fumble. I think. I think they're still fighting for it, Keith. It Maybe going back and forth in there. Now they got it. They had two guys diving for it. The ball was kicked so short and so high. No, they gave it a UCLA. My goodness. Well, whoever was down in the bottom of that stack is a pretty good grappler because I, he, he came I, I think I think it, I think number 50 had it and I think it changed hands. I, I coming off and said, hey, I had it. I had it. All right, here's Steve Buck now at 6'5", 201, uh, stop against Arizona State. UCLA started out with Tennessee and then came to Michigan and then go to Oregon. All three of those on the road. Yep. Ains again, and it runs them up to the 30-yard line. The Bowl Alliance, everybody talking about Nebraska losing the other day uh, to Arizona State and, and putting them out. Uh, that's not quite right. Uh, all the conference champions are eligible in the Bowl Alliance, and that certainly includes the Big 12, and you certainly are not going to discount Nebraska from being a contender in the Big 12 conference. Then you have the two at-large berths, but you must have at least eight wins as an at-large team. Little things hidden away in the fine print, too. Too early in the season to be crossing anybody off, Keith. That's right. About being in that alliance or being in the championship game. And the good thing about Nebraska losing or Tennessee losing or Texas losing early in the season is that it is as early. You drop down. You win number 760 for Michigan. That is the best all time. More wins than anybody else. And uh, here's a young fellow who's going to go home tired now, but whose future is suddenly looking brighter and brighter because he's getting the very valuable experience today as John Ains is piling up the yard. It's a true freshman who is getting his first opportunity to play. They were a little afraid to get him in because, you know, freshmen, they don't know what they're going to do. He's 6'2 and 224 pounds. They have not had a real same play. He's just getting started. He'd like to play another quarter. They've run the same play three or four times in a row. But this thing's over. It's been over for some sure. time. And uh, 
it's just giving something John something to tell his grandchildren 30 years from now yeah and uh, 40 years from now would be the start for him I'm running 20 seconds inside 20 now Colorado was a winner today as you can see and we're going to run off the clock now this game is over your final score is Michigan 38 and UCLA 9 Lynn Swan. Keith, I've got Charles with me. Charles, a tremendous ball game for you this afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, came into, you, you very seldom get challenged by another team. So you've got a reputation. They know you're going to cover well. Is it, is it difficult for you to maintain that concentration? No, not at all. I mean, I knew they were going to come in and try me. You know, we've been going over it all week and practice. You know, coaches tell me they're going to try you today, and, and that's what they did. As the Michigan Wolverines win comfortably, they were dominant. 556 yards for Michigan, only 169 yards for UCLA, 62 passing, and uh, that was a one-sided game, Keith. I all think it all got back down to Michigan being a little bit more physical and just warmed down. Yeah, more people at home, all that, and uh, uh, they go to Northwestern next week, and they need they need to send a message because uh, that's a pretty good football team waiting down there in Evanston. They needed a good offensive performance today, and they got one. 